What is going on, everyone? Today, I want us to have another chat about Echidna Gate 1. You all seem to really like these rants or discussions from last time's DPS meter video. I see it all, you know, and you guys killed it on the views, the likes, and the subscribes. So, I got you all with another one. I really do notice everything to make sure I am constantly improving these videos. And look at that, we already wiped. <laughs> anyway, and give you guys something to engage in or put in your background as you do your Chaos Dungeons. To put it simply, hey, someone even watches me while taking a number two. Shoutouts, you know who you are. Whatever it is, I am so grateful to have you all here and we can wrap up this intro with a subscriber plug. We passed the big 500 subscribers and counting. Let's go. Oh my goodness. And we're almost reaching 600 at the time of this video. You all are so amazing. And if you haven't already, please click on that subscribe button. It's free. Have you clicked it yet? Okay, let's get on with the video. So, the first thing I want to talk about is a rush design. So I'm going to be honest, this raid feels extremely rushed. It's like they designed gate 2. Oh, we just wiped again. Oh, brother. I didn't realize how many times we wiped this in this recording. But, you know, this is how it is. This is the real pug experience that I'm showing you all. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. Uh, it feels like they decide, designed gate 2 first and then just slapped gate 1 together at the last second. You see this pattern in other raids too, like Thaymine, Foldis, and Akan, where gate 1 of all of those raids just leaves you scratching your head, like wondering how they could release something in this condition. Like seriously, how? Anyway, moving on to the second point that I wanted to talk about is at the start of the raid, there are way too many mobs. I get it. They wanted to make it look cool and fit the theme. But come on. Getting stunned on cooldown, knocked down on cooldown, and trying to dodge a giant dragon shadow while pterodactyls are yoinking you up into the air. And then the boss has these insane patterns that knock you down from like three meters away. It's just not a fun fight. Okay, okay, we liked it in the beginning. Ha <laughs> charge everybody with the veal. Okay, it, we're tired of it now. Okay, it's frustrating. Especially when your group doesn't really have good AOE clear. Such a miserable experience at the start of the raid. But does it get even better? No. So, point number three. Let's move on to the safe spot. Oh my god, we just wiped again. Okay, so I think this one's the last wipe. It should be. Otherwise, this video will take way too long. So, hopefully this is the last wipe. Anyway, let's continue with the safe spot mechanic. So That's the first mechanic, like or the real mechanic that you see in this raid. Can someone explain to me? why we are not grouped up with our own party during this mechanic. Some players are able to get shielded from slight tick damage and even heavy ones from the support, while others are left to dry. Why is that even a thing? Just separate us by parties. It makes way more sense. Who even at Smilegate thought this was a good idea? Seriously. Did they do it so people can't cheese the mech with Awakening Shield and other DR things? Because that's just evil if that's the case. You know, just think about it. In in the headquarters, they're just twiddling their thumbs going, hey, how do we make the player's experience absolutely miserable? Because this is, this is the result right here. Like, come on. At least you should have it so that I am not taking chip damage from the little thing, the, the red ghost or the black ghost that passes by. So, it rewards doing the mech correctly. And I don't need a support to shield me. Having the worst case of not having a support 
plus let's say your party fails your thing is the most frustrating thing to deal with that's a pot gone and it, uh, we're, we're about to get to the good part here hold on don't get me started on my last point which i'm sure most of you are thinking right now but before we get to it i wanted to inject and make a quick reminder to subscribe if you are enjoying this video or if, even if you agree i really do look at the analytics so make sure you subscribe i almost had a tongue twister there okay so as you all were probably expecting maybe maybe not don't even get me started on the splitting up mechanic it is completely imbalanced the stagger party has a significantly easier time than the non-stagger party i don't think anyone disagrees with me here it's it's very obvious and to make it worse the stagger party also gets a better chance at the mvp screen because they're doing more damage to the boss just simply put right easier plus like all that less potiony and shieldy and knockdowny mechanics you're gonna do more damage so you're telling me they get an easier boss to fight and a guaranteed mvp no wonder people are making parties and then dumping the lead to party two this literally reminds me of my own video titled how to do more damage it's a meme video by the way it's like saying good luck party two not my problem i'm in party one this mechanic is straight up garbage and needs some serious balancing i see it way too much in my pugs the some party one leader makes the butt lobby and even if they are not heavy and staggered, like there's a Sork, a Gunslinger, and a Bard with no vital point, they go, We are we are the stagger team, guys. Who from party two can do the sidereal? Come on, man. Really? What if nobody can do the sidereal? Right? Then we're all screwed. Like you just you just wasted everyone's time. Now we have to restart and, and find new people. And then you kick people. Because you are unable to do the non-stagger mechanic or just just the fact that you care not to do it like that's just disgusting behavior in my opinion and i see it every single week on all of my characters it is gross smile gate you need to fix this do better either reward the non-stagger party by letting them get on the MVP screen, you know, show the recognition for all the hard work that they do, or make the boss do simple mechanics so we can take it easy, right? No, no BS mechanics or whatever patterns that that boss does, this stupid Narkeel thing. Stop, just, just be a Trixie and Dummy like the Stagger Party has it. I think that's fair, right? So you can compete with them on who can do more damage. Now, those aren't the only solutions. Smilegate probably needs to cook a little bit more, you know? So I have no idea if they'll ever change it or if they even have any ideas. Either way, this needs to be fixed. I can't believe nobody has talked about this yet, or at least in Reddit, all the things I've seen in Reddit and other videos, nobody seems to talk about this. Why? It is a blatant problem. Why are we having it so that Party 2 is dumped with the non-stagger side. And then we're having a tough time while the, the Party 1 who should be doing it and has a Sork and Gunslinger with zero stagger is doing the actual stagger. Like, that's crazy. Okay, anyway. So, those were kind of my points. And that concludes my rant on Echidna Gate 1. Uh, from the rush designs to that specific imbalance mechanic, Splitting up, it just feels like a mess, a hot, hot mess. I am curious to hear what you all think. Uh, have you experienced the same frustrations? Do you have other frustrations? Let me know in the comments below. But seriously, there needs to be some major changes to this gate one and future gate ones. This isn't acceptable. Wake up, smile gate, and do better. If you made it this far, 
Hey, what is up, my pineapple gang? You all are awesome, seriously. If you aren't part of the pineapple gang, don't forget to subscribe and join us. Anyway, thank you all for watching. And I am going to end it by... So nobody wants to see this crap. So I'll show you guys what happens at the end. All the way here. So I'll show you guys the end. This is the end of the video. I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.